The conquering of land by plants was one of the most significant evolutionary events in the history of the planet. However, the Earth was not always the ecological haven we see today. A number of major changes had to occur to the Earth's environment and to early plant morphology in order for their survival to be successful outside of an aquatic environment. In this short film, we will examine the changes that occurred in order for terrestrialization to happen. Land surfaces were available for colonization by plants from an early point in the history of multicellular life. However, other essential requirements were still developing. These involved the formation of sizable and stable nearshore environments, the development of soils, and the improvement of atmospheric and climatic conditions suitable for the survival of plants on land. The Cambrian and Ordovician were periods of relatively intense tectonic activity, resulting in reorganization of the continental plates. During this time, there were extreme changes to sea level. At the start, sea level rose in response to both the mantle upwelling due to tectonism and the reduction of the ice sheets due to melting in the last glacial period in the late Proterozoic. Extensive flooding of the continental plates at this time allowed the formation of large continental shelf areas, making vast shallow seas. This was succeeded by another period of glaciation at the end of the Ordovician, which persisted for 500,000 years and thus resulted in the reduction of global sea level by approximately 60 metres. Located in Argentina, the oldest fossil evidence was dated to be 473 million years old on the eastern margin of the Gondwanan continent, showed unequivocal evidence for cryptosporids originated in the east of the supercontinent before colonising to the west. The formation of soils is very significant in the conquering of land, in that without these soils, the plants could not have successfully thrived on land. Bare rock surfaces on the earth during this time would not have had humic material or readily available nutrients such as iron, phosphate, sulphur and nitrogen. One of the most crucial mechanisms for the production of soils enriched with iron and phosphorus was the weathering of the parent material, which was bedrock in this case. Early prokaryotic and eukaryotic organisms and microbes played a major role in the breakdown of parent rock material and discharging iron and phosphorus into the soils. This occurred even before plants evolved to be suited to terrestrial conditions and thus formed the earliest thin soils. Nitrogen is also an important nutrient for plant survival. The evolution of these nitrogen-fixing bacteria would have resulted in the amount of nutrients through the biosphere to increase by a factor of 100. The most significant difference between the environmental conditions of modern Earth and Ordovician Earth is in the composition of the atmosphere. In the modern atmosphere, there is 535 times more oxygen than carbon dioxide, whereas in the Ordovician, CO2 concentrations were up to 35 times higher than present. This means that the evolution of plants occurred in a CO2-rich environment with exceptionally low O2, only 4% compared to today's 21%. This limited the body size of these plants. The ozone layer would have been much thinner with this low level of oxygen, and this would have been a major limitation to the terrestrialization process. Along with these changes in environmental conditions, major evolutionary changes in plant structure, shape, life cycle and reproduction were crucial in order for plants to succeed on land. While in their aquatic environment, there was no need for specialised systems to distribute water and nutrients as all the cells were submerged in the water and nutrient source. Terrestrialization needed mechanisms to move water and nutrients around the plant. As a result of this problem, they developed hollow cells within the plant body that were strong enough to withstand the pressure imposed by the pull of the water through the plant. Evidence of spores from the upper or division as single envelope enclosed monads arranged combinations of two or four spores enclosed in an envelope. About 430 million years ago, naked spores were found with no envelope and these had a distinctive Y-shaped mark as evidence for this having been part of a tetrad or four spore arrangement. Tetrads are found in non-vascular plants today such as mosses, liverworts and hornworts. Trilete spores are found in plants with vascular tissues. The importance of these spores being found in the fossil record is that it indicates a time when a transition from predominantly non-vascular to vascular plants occurs. Evolution of desiccation resistant spores was vital to the terrestrialization process. It enabled long distance transport of spores which led to the establishment of isolated colonies on the continental interiors. The cuticle reduced water loss and appeared to hinder movement of gases in and out of the plant. Evolution of stomata regulated this. The earliest land plants evolved into an atmosphere rich in carbon dioxide and as a result this meant that there was less water loss via transpiration through the stomatal opening. With the loss of support provided by water, another modification had to be made in order for the plants to remain upright. Although the mechanical strength of lignin would have provided some support, structural organisation was also important. For acquisition of height, the most suitable system is to have a stem that allows the plant to continually grow longitudinally with only a small reduction in volume to surface area ratio, resulting in a large, wide, flat top and a small stem. Upright stance was not the only obstacle associated with the terrestrialization process. Early land plants also needed to evolve a system to anchor them to the ground and allow them to get nutrition and water from soils. 
The development of non-vascular to vascular plants was a hugely important step in plant evolution. The evolution of a lignified vascular transport system permitted plants to increase in size and occupy drier habitat. The introduction of branching within a sporified body enabled plants to explore more and build more complex architectures in the competition for light, leading to a complexity and a number of canopy layers in a terrestrial ecosystem. For the first time in plant evolutionary history, the mature stage of the life cycle was the sporified and vascular plants, also increased the potential to expand geographically away from localised water sources. The large-scale changes in plant evolution that led to the greening of terrestrial surfaces likely had very important impacts on the land surface between the Middle Ordovician and Early Devonian. Without land-dwelling plants, sedimentological evidence indicates that river systems were broad with unstable banks. Following the development of land plants, there is indications for the evolution of channeled rivers with more stable banks, muddy floodplains indicating weathering of uplands by plants and the formation of soils, rates of erosion, atmospheric concentration, of carbon dioxide and oxygen and biogeochemical cycles were all impacted and as a result of these changes the climatic feedback was extensive. By the mid-Devonian, after going through extensive evolutionary changes and dramatic climatic and atmospheric changes, plants occupied every hospitable environment on the Earth's surface, hence causing further changes to the atmosphere and thus allowing for the further evolution of plants to evolve into trees and grasses in the later stages of the Earth's history, giving rise to the wide variety of plants seen in the world today.